a ridiculously large, big honking storm came through. Didn't have power for a week. Uh, but you haven't made a video for like three weeks. You guys see that painting? Eric Staub, thank you. Look at that painting. It's the most beautiful painting in the world. Here you go, Eric Staub on Instagram. Go check him out. Check out his other works. Thanks, Eric. That just belongs in this shop, you know? Chohanyo. Chohanyo? Thank you. You guys are sending me wall art, and I appreciate it to reduce the echo in this shop and improve my video quality. Thank you. That's a nice piece right there. My fans from Arizona. Chohanyo on Instagram. Thank you. Go check him out, too. Okay. We're doing a video here. I, mean, I don't know what to make, either. I'm coming at this completely blind. No thoughts before having turned on the camera, so what, what should I make? Let's get back to the roots. Let's carve a fish out of wood and make a fishing lure and fish with it and catch a fish. Let's do a fancy swim bait though. Realistic, scale carving, gill carving. Wood. I have some soapstone. That's gonna be for a one day so pretty soon. Balsa, no. That is bass, but too thin. I'm probably gonna end up using poplar here. Poplar. This is not a big piece, but I just, I just realized, let's keep it a good size. Let's not make it too big. I wanna catch a fish. It's an inch thick. Might not need all of that inchage. What am I making? I'm tired, it was a long week. You guys remember when I cut my finger on the bandsaw? I was making a creek chub, a, just a detailed creek chub. Let's tackle that project again. Chub minter. There. I hope that comes across to you as a creek chub. The profile and shape and the look of that because it's about the best I can do. Let's cut it out. And this time, I am not going to cut my finger. It's gonna be a pretty one. Did you guys notice the bend that I kind of put in this bait too? Like from the nose to the tail, bit of an arch. That's something I'm not really sure if it will have much of an effect on the action or not, but I would assume it gives it a bit of a roll while it's swimming. Show off that paint scheme. If it's flashy, flash that paint scheme a little bit. Let's cut the joints. Four and a half inches, by the way, is the length of this bait. Perfect creek chub size. You can all have your own opinion. Oh, all this, oh, I had it. This is delicate. There, no, no. Dare. Ah. Uh, oh, that's on. Because that's, okay. <laughs> the mumbled, awkward ramblings of a lure maker. I, I'm sorry. I saw her. As you can see, that will meet up perfectly. Oh, duh, I'm a dummy. As you can see, that joint line, if I cut the V, is gonna cut right into that bottom fin where I want material to be. So I'm gonna just go ahead with it and make the cut, but I might need to be cutting this fin off and then putting a plastic one on the bottom which on the bottom of baits is preferred to have like Lexan or some kind of polycarbonate, you know? Makes it stronger. Impact resistant aerospace technology for your lure. I remember back when I was buying a car a long time ago, the guy advertised on this Mitsubishi Lancer that the headlights were made out of uh, Lexan polycarbonate. It's like, then he said, it's what they use in the spaceship, like trying to make it cool. But then I was like, yeah, you can, you can get that from Menards. <laughs> A little story time for you there. Menards is my hardware store for you international viewers. Y you can just get it at the hardware store. Thankfully that one will meet up perfectly too. We got the joints cut on this thing. Time to do the upper profile or the profile of the bait looking down on it. And by the way, I just cut off that bottom fin. I will be putting another one on 
I'm a sucker for useless details like that. I want this thing to be fat and then the tail to be nice and skinny. Not too skinny. I'm going to be carving detail into this tail, so somewhere in the middle, right there. That's, that's the thickness. The fattest part this way is going to be the fattest part this way too, so right on the joint line. Oh, but you know what? Wow. Already got ahead of myself for this video. I got to cut the fans. I am rusty. I have made so few lures this year compared to last year. I only got one fin to cut because I cut the other one off. Let's cut it out. Let's get this fan cut. This fan out, boys. Fan cutting action right here. Mm -mm -mm. I didn't even grab a seat. I'm just gonna stand up and cut this fan. Talent right here. Okay, we are ready to proceed. Here we go, as promised. This chub is nice and fat, and that is the shape. Let's get to carving. Before carving, you gotta draw all your chamfer lines. I should be using a pen. Well, I'm gonna use a pencil first. This is gonna be fancy. So, I'm gonna stick with the pencil, make sure all the lines are where I want them, and then I'm gonna go back over them with a pen. And then, start removing chunks of wood that do not belong there. whilst keeping the bait in frame. So you guys can get some nice, cool close-up shots of some poplar getting carved into a chub. Unnecessary commentary. I'm sorry. It's carved, nice and roughly, but I got a whole bunch more of this to go. More of this. Some manual belt sanding. Unfortunately, creek chubs kind of have a really simple, ugly gill pattern. Not too impressive, but I'm gonna go for realism. I think that'll look just fine in the end. It'll look like a creek chub. That's what I'm gonna go off of. I'm gonna cut those out, use them as a stencil, transfer them with pencil to the bait, start carving. Such a difficult process to try to get it even on both sides. So many back and forwards, checking stuff. That's right, Finny. It's tough. Good enough for me. You cannot achieve perfection, so just try to make it look okay. Same process with the rest of these lines on this little piece of paper. Cut it out, stencil it to both sides. And when it comes down to it, when you put the knife to the wood, that's when you really need to make it look good. This is just preparing. Oh, there's like a fly in my eyeball. Good Lord. Go, go away. I'm getting like 500 of those little sticky fly traps. I'm gonna line the ceiling. Did you see that fly? That's what it's been doing to me this whole time. This is got a sharp knife like this. You get applying pressure, cutting wood grain. And a really irritating fly. I'm sorry, I'm complaining. I mean, let's get back to work. And yeah, I like Allison Krauss. It's a big deal. It's my vibe and music, okay? Got some scored lines right there. Don't carve too deep. Makes your bait look stupid. Sorry, that was harsh. It's just not ideal. <laughs> Don't carve too deep on a bait this size. Little pieces at a time.
Rough carving, complete. I'm still gonna do the gill plates down here, but I'm gonna sand all this smooth first. The way I make lures involves a ridiculous amount of sanding. Probably most of the time I'm sanding a bait while I'm making it. Not most of the time, but like three hours of sanding, like this. If you want stuff to look really smooth and flow into it and natural and fishy, it involves a lot of sanding, maybe two and a half hours. Maybe I have a problem because I always like lures just sitting there and I see it and I'm like, oh, what's that? Oh, get the sandpaper. But that was probably completely unnecessary. I could have just not done that and it would have been fine. You know what I mean? Next day, here's where I'm at. Did some carving last night. We got both of those side fins. I just started on this gill plate here, or the plates on the gill there. Have to do this side still. This is turning out beautiful though. It's like a little ideal sized three piece swim bait. I just need to make this action perfect. And this is gonna be little old faithful when it comes to swim bait fishing with a hard bait. Lots of confidence in throwing this bait. Awfully fishy. So, I may have mentioned something about carving scales earlier in this video. Different woods have different limitations, and poplar I thought might be suitable for carving scales on a lure this small, but it's not. After getting all of this carving done, came to the vital realization that it is not suitable, so I'm not gonna try it. Besides, I, I do enjoy painting scales more than carving scales. So, we'll get this looking spiffy with some paint. And also, you might have noticed that I have not carved an eye socket yet, or drilled out an eye socket yet. Not gonna do that until it's sealed. I always have better luck, or it always turns out better, drilling the eye socket after you got some sealer on the bait. It gets real clean, real clean eye socket. Let's get these joints cut, get pilot holes marked and everything, and. One sec, let me think about steps. Cut the joints, pilot holes for the hardware for the joints, pilot holes for the line tie hook hangers, know where I'm going to put the lead, drill the lead hole, and then seal. Let's do it. And as I'm cutting this, I'm trying to be careful not to just shove this piece of wood into this piece of wood, because I will lose all the detail and just mar everything up on that fin right there. That's some, that was some fine carving. That light doesn't help, does it? Ooh, that's a pretty intense joint cut right there. And it's absolutely perfect. Perfectly centered. Man, if I do this bait too good, I'm gonna wanna mold it, but then I'll never use that mold again. Cause I, I usually don't remake baits. All right, next, next cut. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Apparently I was using my little weak boy hands right there. Uh, shot across the garage, real quick. Lucky my eye wasn't right there. Let's uh, put my big boy hands on. And what I'm doing is sanding back this to that line and keeping this point right here. That way the joint has more room to wiggle. Let's try that again. That really does make a big difference. I recommend doing that on your wooden swim baits opening up that joint a bit for more wiggle. The back joint doesn't really matter because it's so thin back there, it's gonna get set, set apart to where it's gonna be able to churn and move plenty. So, now for a bit of a boring part, drilling all these pilot holes and marking everything correctly. Just use some calipers, get everything evenly spaced. I don't know, there's not much to say about this part, but I'm saying stuff about it. And even on joints this thin right here, I recommend using two joint connections still. It keeps the bait stabilized. Otherwise the tailpiece would be able to do this 
I mean, really, you don't want the, that on three-piece swim baits because that'll act as like a, I don't know, a rudder that acts against the rest of the bait and you don't get as good of an action. Time for me to try to explain something else to you. Because this bait has a natural curve to it, I'm deciding now that where I want to put the line tie on this thing isn't center line and is not below the center line. I want to, I think I want to put it above the center line because if I put it below, it's going to make this whole bait do this. Then that's too much of the bait moving below where the center line was and where you're connected and it's going to make it roll too much as it swims through the water. Probably not even have a good action. If I put it above, it's going to work with the natural curve of the bait, I think. It's not a spoon. It's a swim bait. I want, to minimize, I want to minimize the rollage. I'm gonna get a hook nice and close up to the head, and then I'm gonna get a hook as far back on the second piece as I can. Can I see that hole? That is gonna be the lead hole and the front hook hanger hole. I'm just gonna drill this kind of shallow with a half inch bit, and that's where the lead's going, and this bait, right up close to the head. I don't think I'm, I don't think I need any and the second piece. I should be proactive and check and make sure and stuff, but this is marling baits. We don't really do that on this channel. Dang it. Nothing in this shop is ever plugged in, man. It's not like I don't have the means to be able to get that straightened out, but whew, that is annoying sometimes. I think that'll be enough. Let me get a feel for it for a sec, one sec. Is that enough? You know what? Middle piece is getting some lead. I don't care if it doesn't want it. 3 8 inch. No, I don't want That'll be enough. Lead pot's hot. It's lead time, boys. Super glue bake soda. That piece is bottom heavy. Twist wire hardware for this bait. All right, folks. We got our three pieces of our three piece swim bait and it's time. Did I show you guys the carvings? Got everything nice and clean, sanded off the lead holes, gill plates, fins and whatnot. Tiny, tiny carvings on that fin. Got some secondary spines on the ends of the top fin even. Lots of carving. That probably took me uh, three hours of actually working on that, so. Time to seal. Oil-based polyurethane is what I like to use. Day three of this detailed creek chub build. Clean, clean eye sockets. I put super glue back over them to seal that wood. Today, we just need to get this thing painted and it's ready to go, ready for paint. No reason to delay, let's paint. Actually first, let's sand a little bit. And of course, we're starting with white. Been looking at a picture of a creek chub. And I think I thought of a pretty slick way of doing this. I'm gonna come in with black first, but I'm gonna use this meshing. Just a scraggly, I don't even know where this comes from. That's what I'm using. Putting it over the bait. And I'm gonna do thin, random, kind of tiger stripe black lines. I'm gonna try to keep them thin. Take that off, then put the colors over the bait. Like a purplish blue. Very, very faded purplish blue. Very faded chartreuse. There's even a pink under the chartreuse. There are a lot of colors going on in this fish, but they're all really faded and subtle. So we'll try to get this looking realistic, but that's my plan. Pretty subtle stuff, but I think it'll, it'll look good. Forgot to record the unwrapping, but that's 
exactly how it turned out. That's a good base to start colors on. Detail black magenta on the top flank there. It's a really good color. It's very natural, but it's purple. That's hard to achieve. And that's the tail fin. The color actually belongs right there. I know that looks bad, but it'll, it'll all get cleaned up later. I'm gonna put a little bit in the center of the fin, actually, too. Like that. It belongs there, don't worry. I know it looks like a lot right now, but it belongs there. I did put quite a bit on that side, honestly, but it belongs there. Maybe some of you guys were screaming at me. <laughs> uh, does that look different? Because this is the way I had it before. Whoops. But I looked at that. I don't know. Some of you probably like it, you know, the way it was supposed to be. But look at this. That tail comes up a little bit. Now the bait's in a straight line. I don't know. That doesn't look all that bad. And it doesn't matter which way that tail faces. There's no weight in the tail. I don't know. Should I roll with that? Yeah. I think I'm gonna roll with that. I think that's fine. Sometimes you make a mistake. That completely changes something, but it's fine. I think this is one of those times. It's fine. As for the scale color, I'm gonna go just with pearl white. Those colors are pretty, well, just that chartreuse is pretty intense and I wanna tame it. I want the scales to be brighter than the, than the chartreuse. And about the only thing brighter than chartreuse is white, so. Okie dokie. I think it's dry. Hopefully the scales took some color away. Yeah, a little bit. When you look at it with some pearl shine, like with some reflection, which is not easy to do at this angle, there you go. It takes away some color, replaces it with some flash, and a tailpiece. Now that the scales are on, I'm gonna go with the, it's called fluorescent, fluorescent aqua. Um, gonna keep it very thin. Might even add a thinner and mix this. I don't usually do that. This paint's thick, it's like a glob. So I need to thin it with a reducer, not just water. It's best to use an actual reducer from Createx or whatever your paint is. That was more reducer than paint. Mix it perfectly to where it is one homogenous state. You don't want chunks. Now it's a liquid. It's like milk. Excuse me, milk, not milk. I made that snake video and everybody's like, you say mulk. Like they were spelling it with a U and an A. Like, why do you say mulk? <laughs> I just say milk instead of milk. Uh, Midwestern thing. Anyway, add that to your airbrush. Of course, add that to your airbrush, duh. And then I'm just gonna go over the top, the scales on the top there. And it's nice because I can add quite a bit. This isn't a sensitive thing, you know? But it's a fluorescent color as well, so it really stands out that those scales are kind of bluish now. You, you see that on Creek Chubs, like that. A little bit of blue on those scales, just like that. Probably want to consider using a less scraggly brush. That did the trick. You can still see the spine details, but there's texture and stuff in the color. Looks pretty realistic. They really do have just like a homogenous, I'm saying that word multiple times in this video, that's weird. Homogenous one color side fin and that other fin down there. That's a wicked oxide red with a little bit of water. I just put some on there and I quickly get some water on my brush and spread it around. Needs more. Too much water. Dry off your brush completely and soak up the water and start again. It has to be done in that order or else you just won't get results at all. This one's uh, darker. Whoopsie doopsie. Oh well. You can't be perfect, fellas. I kind of like that better though. Don't worry, folks, it'll look fine. That's more me telling myself that. <laughs> it's fine, everything's fine. I was reluctant to put that color there, but as you can see on a real chub, it is there. So I put it there with reluctance. I think it looks fine. What sucks about lure making is if you didn't want to do that, you have to do it twice. 
because you got to do the other side. <laughs> Every time with my scraggly old brush, I really should get some better brushes. Kind of brushes that like make you want to use them. They're so nice, you know. I should get I should get a set. All right, nothing wrong with that. And now, this might very well be the last little detail here. I need to give this gill on the top here some bluish differentiations, patchiness. Comes all the way down here. Like that. This blue has gold in it though. So it's not too blue. At different angles, you'll see a gold pearl. That's some decent detail. I painted the top black too, I didn't show that, but that's getting there. Just have to glue on the eyes, clear coat, and assemble the bait now. Why delay? Why? Let's, let's go. Here's the eyes I'm going with. It's the most Creek Chub style eyes I've got. They're a little off. Creek Chubs have really bright irises most of the time, so. And this has no iris, but it's the right color, so I'm gonna go with it. As you can see on a real Creek Chub, there's no dark ring around the eye. And I did not put one on here. I'm kind of wishing that I did, but that's okay. That's really okay. So the bait is painted and the eyes are on and it's ready for clear coat. And I have a new one. I haven't shown this on the channel yet, but I've tried it on some, I'll just, I'll just show you. Maybe some of you remember this bait. This, I shouldn't be showing you this because this is far ahead of where I left off with the new most expensive swim bait in the world, the Mother Chaser. Here's where I'm at. You guys deserve to see it. Um, it kind of got scuffed up in the move right there, but I can fix that. Or I can just show you the other side. But I've been using this new clear coat. It comes in an aerosol can, and it's from that same company that sells the KBS Diamond Clear. It can't be the same thing just in a can. Like, same ingredients and stuff, but this stuff is very good. I can vouch for this stuff. I didn't have this the smoothest either, and this is just one coat, and I wanted to put clear coats between coats of paint on this mother chaser, and that worked out perfect. If you guys want a quick, easy spray on clear coat, I've only used it once, but I already recommend it. It's good stuff. Since this is a multiple piece swim bait, we carved all that detail. We don't want to just put a thick clear coat on it and you can't see anything, but you still want a clear coat on it and it to be durable. That's what we'll be using. Probably five, six or seven, five, six or seven coats on this bait. I'm going to be coating that bait for the rest of the day and we're going to fish with it tomorrow. Getting shiny. I don't think I just, I just, yeah. Sorry, I didn't take video of me putting those joint connections in. I think I took video of me making those, but. Look at that. Look how smooth that turned out. Just flippy flappy, no resistances at all. Usually there's a little bit of a kink somewhere and I gotta get in there with some thin pliers and, but nope, that one just turned out. This is one of the spiffiest looking little swim baits I've ever made. Even though I oversized the hardware on these joints for more freedom, that's, that's why they worked out well. I think it still looks great. Little Creek Chub, very brightly colored Creek Chub, but the picture I was referencing off of, I mean, that was a pretty bright Creek Chub. East Coast kind of Chub, you know? There it is. Ooh, I have access to a new pond. Very, very nice pond. It's actually a network of three ponds. Just recently gained access to it, so... Why delay? Let's go. We're here at the new pond. It's a big one, and there's more back there. I'm gonna fish this corner first. Last time I was here, my friend Nick had a big bass on that he lost. I can't think of a better bait to try to get that bass, so let's get that bass. So, 
sorry. How's she look? First time seeing. Oh, she swims beautifully. Get ready to see some fish, fellas. Yeah. Get ready to see some fish. Dang it. That bass just dove on this lure. Oh, had a hit right there. Had another hit. Dang it, just a small bass. Let's see if anything's biting at the little pond, I guess. I got this one on now. Thank goodness. Oh, that's not a bad bass. There we go. It's official. Every time I walk away from my big camera, I catch a fish. It's official. And bass like fancy creek chub swim baits. just a pounder. Oops. Be free. Let's get a five pounder. I don't know why that fish felt like it was bigger. It was just a pounder. Oh, there's another one. Another bumpity boo. There's another. Probably the same size. I think. Maybe. It's fighting very, wow, it's fighting very hard. But it's the same, oh, I just took them on the side there. Same size. Already official. Been here for 40 minutes, caught two bass on this swim bait. It is a swim bait. You catch less fish on swim baits, so. I'm not too disappointed. I just wish that they were sizable fish. There's one. There's a dinky one. Well, actually, that's the biggest one of the day so far. <laughs> okay. Yeah, actually, that's the fattest one of the day. Nothing to write home about. Well, we're at the creek. The water's low, like abnormally low. So if the creek doesn't work out, we'll go to the river. Hopefully the creek works out though. And thanks for saying hi. Two dudes that stopped in that parking lot and said hi to me. I was eating, so <laughs> thanks for saying hi. You guys see how low this is? I don't think this is going to produce anything. This is beyond Tiny Creek. This is... This is Micro Creek. Crazy Micro Creek fishing right here. I just saw a smallmouth. Whoops. Oh, wow. My line just broke at the uh, at the tip. This rod's getting old. Dang it. Now I gotta get my feet wet. Didn't wanna do that. I'm going back now. See, there was, did you guys see that fish? There was a fish in there the whole time. Ooh. 
you know what this calls for? A new rod. Or something happened to this tip and that insert. And uh, I've been breaking line. I let my friend borrow this rod and he broke his line on it too. Time for a new rod. Made it to the river here at the pike spot. Got a new rod too. Went with a St. Croix, St. Croix, St. Croix Triumph. Uh, it's a bit heavier than what I should be using for this reel, but I might switch the reel out eventually. I just liked the feel of this rod, so. Anyway, let's try to get a pike on the swim bait. On the chub. Well, darn, getting late, couldn't fish all day, got stuff to do. Three bass, not bad, no pike, better than no fish, but I did get a good excuse to get a new rod. That's a win. I like this thing. And that lure is a winner. I'm gonna be using this a lot, I think. Belongs in the tackle bag. That clear coat held up good too. I fished with this bait for most of the day. I'm impressed, not a blemish, really. It's out of a can for goodness sake. Convenient. I know I have not been posting much, but 2020, this year, has been absolutely savage. <laughs> savage year, 2020. But uh, I think everything's settled down. I think we're getting back in the swing of things. And there are baits to make, and I cannot wait to make them. On to the next bait. Get this fan clip. This fan on it, boys. Look at it. Mm. Johanyo. Weak boy hands right there. It's about the best I can do. Menards is my hardware store.